That's a lot of movement in that post. You'd want you'd want even concrete around the entire post. It definitely should not move as soon as you let go of it. This reaction video sponsored by Nationwide Industries, but Nationwide Industries is more than just a sponsor. I legitimately enjoy doing business with them, both with the Cornerstone 2 hinges and the Trident latch that we use on our pool gates or on their full line of chain link hardware. They're great people to work with. I appreciate them a lot. If you're looking for a supplier, you should check them out too. All right, guys, today's video is titled How to Remove and Replace a Rotted Fence Post Anchored in Concrete by the Alex the Handyman channel. If you'd like to watch this video in its entirety without my commentary, we will link the original video in the comments below. Sometimes these things come in waves as they're referred to the channel for a reaction. So that's typically where we get a lot of our reaction videos is you guys will share links with us and ask for our reaction on them. Lately, actually, we just did a reaction video recently on a uh, Pairing a fence for a rotted post. These things come in waves. Let's see how Alex the Handyman handles it. The fence uh, gave up. One of the 4x4s uh, gave up due to rot from the moisture from the ground. So as you could see, the whole fence is leaning to the neighbor's side. And as you could see, it's all rot. Oh, look at that. Ah. Guess it's a good thing he's here to repair. That post was ready to go, obviously. Rotted at grade level. If we're talking about repairing fences and we're not, aside from gates, probably the number one call for repairs is uh, leaning fence or rotted fence post. And they're all pretty much the same. They're rotted right at the ground level. That aerobic zone of the soil is filled with you know, micronutrients and fauna and all this stuff and that like to absorb or eat the wood pulp and uh, just rot it off at ground level. You can see the fence is leaning to the left. So the tools you need to do this job, it's uh, you need shovels to dig out the old concrete. We have a bar to um, mix the concrete, a level to level your four by four, screws, a drill, of course the concrete. I'm using today the fast setting concrete mix. It takes about 10-20 uh, minutes to set hard, so it's... It does set up pretty quickly. I'm not sure about 10 or 15 minutes, but it sets up very quickly. Solid product from Quickrete. We've used it. We use a different version of this now, a different brand of it now. But for repairs, it's great because you can get in and get out same day rather than having to wait for it to cure and then coming back. And we have our 4x4. This one is 10 footer. I'm going to cut it to 8. Most of the times, you know, when we're uh, repairing, replacing posts, you'd go back in with a new post. And this post looks like it may have been, um, well, looks like it's not new. Because usually uh, the height of the fence is about six feet, but you want your post to be two feet on the ground. Without so two foot is kind of an outdated measurement. ASTM standards call for 30 inches or six inches below frost depth, whichever is more. So Chicago is going to have a pretty decent, pretty decent frost depth. Uh, here in the Southwest Missouri, we're at about 24 inches, 20 to 24 inches, depending on the year, of course. Uh, six inches below gets us to that 30 inches. Chicago is probably a good bit more. I don't, I don't know that 24 inches is adequate, one, for structure, two, to avoid frost eve. So now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to remove our broken 4x4 four four, and we're going to dig. Now let's pause right here and ask you guys, how would you go about removing this post? We've seen videos with three or four different solutions on removing a damaged post or a broken post, like removing the concrete from the ground. How would you guys handle it? If you're doing re fence repairs often, you know, if you're doing more than one a month or something, I would invest in some post hole diggers. Uh, they would make this work go a lot better. You'd actually end up with a smaller hole to fill back with concrete, get a set of post hole diggers and probably a rock bar depending on which part of the country you live in. I don't want to dig around too wide because we have the concrete that takes space close whatever we dig around it. It might be too wide. We want it maybe 14 inches by 24 inches deep. 
This is where the rock bar comes in handy. So they're quite a bit longer than the crowbar he's using. Much better on your back than bending over to dig with a shovel and a crowbar. Get a set of post hole diggers and a rock bar. Do your back a favor. I have been digging for about 15, 20 minutes. And uh, guess what I found? Look at this. This is a three round root from the tree. Pretty sizable tree root. Here. Tree's been there for it's a while. A big tree. I think if I cut it, it'll be okay. But it's right on the way of my 4x4 four four support. So I think I'm gonna cut it here and here. I don't know, I probably would have left it. Um, I mean, obviously the old post hole was there without any problem. I probably would have just worked that concrete. So dug a little bit deeper on the opposite side, pushed the concrete over, pulled it out. Uh, rather than trying to damage that tree root. I mean, you never know if you're doing irreplaceable damage. If at all possible, I would have left it. Um, I, I really don't think it's interfering with this post, but let me know what you guys think. Well, how would you have handled this? Well, it was certainly set fairly deep. He might find out his post is a little bit short. That looks like more than 24 inches. Okay, so now I'm ready to put uh, my 4x4 in the ground and cover it with concrete. But how do I know if I'm even with the other side of the fences on both sides? So I put a string. I know you've seen it here on the string here to the other side so that's a decent tip doing a string line top and bottom to make sure you're perfectly in line with these posts both top and bottom i mean the rest of these posts probably aren't going to be perfectly plumb so if you installed it perfectly plumb maybe your one new post would be completely out of whack with the rest of the fence so i have my four by four I'm gonna put a little bit of water at the bottom. So I think this is a pretty common way of um, a version of wet setting, kind of. He's gonna kind of create like a lasagna effect, if you will. Water and concrete, water and concrete, water and concrete, and then stir it up with this crowbar, it sounds like. Certainly one way to do it. Having a helper is definitely, it definitely makes this go much easier. You're not leaning your your fence posts on your string line and then hoping that the string line comes back to true. That's a lot of movement in that post for the amount of concrete. I'd be worried that. There's probably not enough concrete on the back side of that post, which is why it's letting it fall away when he pulls it pulls it to the line. You'd want you'd want even concrete around the entire post. It definitely should not move as soon as you let go of it. Could be a couple of things. Like I said, could be not enough concrete on the back side of that post, or he could have added too much water and it made it really soupy. With the rapid set, you're not supposed to add nearly as much. A lot of guys don't add any water to dry set. They'll compact it and uh, call it good. So I'm all done. It took me about two hours, 45 minutes. It was a lot of concrete to dig out, but now it's nice and even with the rest. Well guys, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Would you have done anything differently or would you have done it exactly the same? I'd love to hear from you guys. If you guys would like to submit videos for us to review in the future, you can leave them in the comments below or send them to joe at thefenceexpert.show.
Until next time, I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors.